And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third map, which is going to be on Inferno. We have Virtus Pro playing Hellraisers, and it's gone to all three maps, which is about as good as it can get right here. The first map was an overpass picked by Virtus Pro and also won by Virtus Pro. And then we have the second map on Nuke. Hellraisers managed to pick that up with a really impressive terrorine victory. I think they picked up, uh, what, nine rounds on that uh, on that terrorist half on Nuke. So pretty damn sick. And then they ended up winning in the end, even though Virtus Pro tried their hardest to come back. And now we're going to be on Inferno. So welcome to the show. We're at Room on Fire, and this is the Case King of the Hill, cooled by Alpenfern. Of course, uh, I'm here with Semler and we have oh it's always Veta Vendetta here we're gonna have to get a, your webcam soon enough Vendetta so we can get like a, a triple screen going on we, we'll work on it we're a bit slow sometimes but we do try and and make it as good as we can big thanks to Case King for helping us out with this league it's been so much fun so far and it's only the sixth week out of 14 we actually have a total of 14,000 euros that we're giving away uh, thanks to Case King and also a lot of other stuff we just gave away one of the AWP so big uh, congratulations to Obstacle but we have one of these headsets as well and we're gonna give one of these away after this game so stick around that's for everyone not just for subscribers but um you do have to be in europe because we can't really uh, ship it too far away but if you're in europe you can uh, participate in the raffle in the chat later and we'll, we'll give one of these away and that's also a giveaway for everyone else down below so just go and click the facebook link down there and you can win a really cool little chair from ak racing and a bunch of other stuff too so uh, and that works for all 14 weeks by the way guys so if you just like the facebook page once you can win all the weeks pretty easy stuff guys we're going to be on inferno and uh, i'd love to hear your predictions um, ben, do you think that HR have recovered from the beating they took versus Epsilon at Gamescom? I actually, well, <laughs> that was not the the A team <laughs> for Hellraiser <laughs> showing up. But I, I, regardless, if the A team of Hellraiser show up on Inferno, I still think this is Curtis Pro maps to lose. Now, I actually have a slight objection to that. Um, not completely. I agree it wasn't the A team. But I actually think I would love to go back and watch the VOD. We should we should make an exercise of this. At one point, guys, let's let's all of us go and watch the VOD again of that that uh, game, because I actually think Hellraisers didn't make a ton of mistake that game. I just think Epsilon played out of their minds on the CT side. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah, saying they yeah, made sure. no mistakes, but 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 I don't think it, it wasn't the F team Hellraisers. That's what I'm trying to say. I just think no, they no, no. they ran into a brick wall. That was Epsilon. So yeah, you, you're I saying think we talked about it. I think yeah. we talked about it as well, uh, as of uh, right after the game, because yeah. obviously we were there. Um, that Hellraisers tried a lot of things that potentially could have worked, and it's not like they threw away any rounds and messed up a lot. It's just that Shoxie was on point, FXO <laughs> was on point, everyone on the B set was on point. Like everything Yoshi was just going, SF, yeah, everything Yoshi was just SF. going the way for Epsilon, and the only thing I think. I think they might have had a shot at was probably getting an opening in apps, and that was it. Yeah. Should we be calling them X Epsilon now, or should we still be calling them Epsilon? Yeah. Does, does anybody know? Well, nothing that we can confirm, right? Yeah. No, that, that's gonna make, that's gonna make people mad. But we can <laughs> talk about the rumor lineups. Still. Like, I don't know if we're on camera still, so I can't see if you're seeing, like, my banana grin right now, but, like, <laughs> all of this, man, waking up this morning to that was an experience. I it was. Idea. Uh, a big switch up in the uh, in the in the French scene. It's interesting. Yeah, I think huge. it's I think it's the biggest change uh, in CS:GO actually in total. Like the mm -hmm. biggest yeah, trade of I, players ever. I would it, say yeah. like it's on par, if not above Hellraiser's Navi. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. when when Astana Dragons was formed, that was obviously yeah. a big switch up. But you're right. It, I actually think you're right. Oh. Um, this isn't two teams getting shredded it's or even three. just one. This is three teams that just got completely shredded and just remulched, basically. It was like pulled pork sandwiches. I don't know how to describe it. But basically, it was like you took those teams, shredded them up, and then put, put like, the, the... Well, I guess the stars, basically, into two teams. Similar, you're and like... now... Now what? You know, now what are you what are you left with? FXO, GMX, from what we can tell. FXO, GMX, SS, Uzi. 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 And oh. Scream are not on a team. Yeah, and if you put those five together, that's not a bad team either. <laughs> Just no. for every, anyone who thinks that, you know, you talk about, you know, gathering up the star players and whatnot, but if you have those five players in, a, in one team as well, they could probably be really, really good. Um, Semla, you're at least 50% you're at least French, maybe even more, uh, depending on, you know, <laughs> depending on the day. <laughs> exactly. And, um, I mean, at, at this point, does it, does it throw back to, to like, you know, the 18th century? Are we back? Are we going to get the guillotine out? Is it, is this an actual revolution that we're, that we're seeing here in the, in the global offensive scene? 
in that case, I would say that Titan are the guys wearing the red hats because <laughs> like you, they clearly took down the top team in France, LDLC. Like LDLC were very firmly first team in France at that point. I don't think any discussion there. I mean, they consistently got farther at nearly every tournament they participated in. They got to the semifinals of Gamescom, like just ridiculous performance. And then out of the blue, just like out of the blue, no, no idea where it came from. You knew that Titan were definitely going to be under pressure, and Epsilon, you could, you know, it's like either or. You're not really sure, but you think that they're getting good results, great, you know. But to see LDLC just shatter and and just be split up like that, I, I had I did not see that coming at all. I think a lot of people are actually uh, miffed about the change because people have grown fond of LDLC, seeing how yeah. they've been one of the very, very few teams that have actually stuck together for a really long time and gradually gotten better. Well, think about think about it. Back when Shoxy was on the open market and everybody was saying LDLC, you know, yeah. drop Uzi, pick up Shoxy, and then they become the death team, right? You'd think there's nobody that can stop them. And then it's they, they don't break up the team. They say, no, we're happy with the team the way it is right now. We're going to stick with Uzi because we feel like he's really filling the role we need him to. And you know this this is what we're gonna do we're gonna stick with this lineup they they that stole only to j then just completely just shatter the team not even just getting one member out like just taking it all apart and just reform two new teams i mean the two new teams look scary as hell but damn did not see it coming at all no i i, I well, actually, I think this is one of the very few changes that we see in CS that make both teams better. And it's going to sound weird because the LDLC, as you said, did get to the semis of Gamescom. But at least on paper, I think both lineups came out the better. Do you, think, those the Titan, do you think that the new Titan like lineup, do you think that for me, I, I look at that team and I, I see a lot of friction. I, I see a lot of potential Apex friction. existence. Well, yeah, Apex in existence, Kaylee and Kenny. I mean, in my eyes, they fill the same role. You know, who's going to go there? I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of pressure now on Apex to make shit happen. Like, I think I, he's he's going to be the point man, if anybody. Like, I don't know. It really feels weird that that team. But when you look at when you look at the LLC, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, like, okay, that that team looks like it could do some serious damage. Look, I think you bring up a really good point with with Apex in existence. I think that the way. The way it's going to turn out is if they if they just want to to funnel all that energy and and instead of pointing it at each other just point point it to another team then yeah that could be an absolutely great change I I agree actually but um but if there's like internal arguing going on then I you know I'd much rather be a spectator on land watching those two argue because that could be interesting well, Don't I you actually... think it's just fun that it's Apex he's like the goddamn Titan VG killer and now he actually he joined up, up with lead with like existence the mind behind it all yeah, I, there's, that's... there's a lot of interesting storylines we're going to have to see. Um, uh -huh. Guys, we did have a couple of issues with uh, some of the players joining the server, so we're just trying to switch the map and switch back again to see if that worked for them. And um, our wonderful admin that we have actually borrowed or actually outright stolen from Fragbyte, um, we're really happy to have him as well helping us out. So that's cool. That's why we can just casually relax because he's on the job for us, which is really good news. Um, speaking yeah, of GMX. Fragbyte, that's, okay. that's coming up as well. GMX sends me a message, X Epsilon smiley face. Oh, so, yeah. oh. And Uzi also tweeted, uh, Uzi also tweeted today, so sad. You know, so it's just like, I, I uh, think, obviously. you know, the speculation, like some weight behind it's actually, you know, been released yeah. this morning on Pacal. Well, you know what, guys, they can make whatever changes they want. I'm, I only worry about one team sticking together, and that's Copenhagen Wolves. I just, you know, as someone <laughs> Danish. Didn't you bet with them at Gamescom? I didn't bet with them. I, I said I would be breaking fingers if they didn't stick oh, okay, together well, until okay. DreamHack Winter. <laughs> so breaking it to the fingers, next level. breaking knees, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every, every member that leaves is going to cost a finger for the remaining. That's what it's down to. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! You take it out of the remaining team. Yeah, oh, that's uh, brutal. You know, it's their job to uh, to to you know make it make it viable, make people stay together. But look, I would have expected that from you, but like Dignitas, you know, it's like the real, the real like powerhouse in Denmark. If it happens there, I'd expect you to go on the warpath, Anders. But oh, I guess the wow. wolves, man, you're you're gonna put your wolf traps out and, uh, and go hunting. It might sound silly, given they are Danish, but I actually feel pretty confident that Dignitas are gonna stay the same lineup for quite some time. Because just after meeting them all and hanging out with them in, in Germany, they have so much fun together as a group. So they barring really someone actually having, you know, too much of a time committed to school or anything like that, I, I don't see any lineup changes ha happening there because they were just having a ball the entire time. 
Yeah, I really hope not. I think I think they they should they should stay together. Basically, I'd be very sad if that happens. I, I haven't even thought about it, so so don't even try me on that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend there's no chance that they'll they'll split up. Um, we're going into Inferno, it seems like we finally got everybody on the server. So let me give a quick welcome to anyone who's joining us since we started. This is the Case King of the Hill, cool by Alvin Foon, and we have got Virtus Pro and Hellraisers playing as the two contenders to fight the King of the Hill, which for this week, because they won last week, is NIP. So there's a, you know, a pretty big, uh, a pretty big king on that on that throne right now. But both these teams are actually teams that are really good at dealing with NIP. So I. I'm quietly proud that we managed to get both these teams in this week because it means NIP are going to have a, a real struggle, I think, even if, uh, you know, no matter who they're going to be up against, basically. Yeah, I think oh, we're yeah, destined for a really good finals. Yeah, definitely. With whichever team goes through here, I think they're going to put up one hell of a fight. Adrian, please. Oh, he was about <laughs> to Zeus someone. I got really excited for a second. Zeus kills all over the place. Well, welcome to the show. This is Room on Fire and uh, Case getting a little cool by Alpha. And again, remember to follow, ch get the channel, guys, to click that follow button. It helps us out. We're almost at 200,000. If we get to 200,000 followers, we're going to be in the top 50 of Twitch, which will, I guess, be just as good as the top 60, but we'll still be even more happy if we can do that. You know, it's just numbers, but still good fun. Also, remember, there's a subscriber, or actually not a subscriber, sorry, uh, just a giveaway for everyone, a Facebook giveaway at the bottom of the page, a raffle going on. So just click the link down there and like the page, and you'll be good to go. You can and all sorts of cool stuff this week. It's a really cool chair from AK Racing. So don't forget about that. Knife round is won by Virtus Pro. And now let's get it on. Do you guys still have VP as your favorites on this map? Nobody's wanted to change their minds. You're going to stick with it? All right. Did I just... Oh, I got disconnected from the mumble. That's why nobody's answering. I'm so sorry, guys. We'll try and we'll we'll come up with a solution for our mumble problem. But uh, in the meantime, let's just uh, get ready here to see if we can get it on. Uh, all right, guys. So I'm gonna try and see if I can find a different mumble server because otherwise I'm gonna be talking to myself, which is not cool. Um, let's just see. <laughs> always, always an issue, right? Well, in the meantime, I am just going to get ready because we can't really pause the show. So don't worry, Semler and, uh, and Mendetta aren't ignoring me. Or at least I hope they're not. It's just the mumble that crashed. That's perfect timing. But um, in the meantime, welcome to the show. It's Virtus Pro who are going to get started on the CT side and Hellraisers on the counter terror side. And um, generally, this is a counter terror sided map. And I'd be surprised if Virtus Pro can't get themselves up to about, I think, even eight or nine rounds is what they should be able to get on this first half here. Pissed around, always important, of course. And Neo is the one up in apartments, and there are a couple of people coming for him here, but at this range with the P2000, it's not at all a bad weapon to have. They're going to try and double team him, and Neo, he really wants to re peek it. Markolov actually looking while reloading, which is a little bit dangerous. And now the smokes are going to go towards Archway, which is going to force Pasha back. So the question is can Viali and Neo stand their ground here? Pasha spots a couple of people. He's going to go down. That's a really strong opening coming in right now for Hell Racers. Down to the pit. Viali is ready. He's missing a lot of shots right now. He's down to 19 points. They're going to go chase him down. And Viali dies, leading Snacks and Taz in a 2 on 5. A great round so far for Hell Racers. And it's going to be Snacks alone. This was such a nice execute coming out from the terrorist side. It's actually it's flawless at this point. That's worthy of study. I'd be surprised if somebody doesn't go back and take a look at exactly how they did that. Everything seemed to work. And now Snags will be alone in this one on five. And I'm going to try and get back on Mumble, guys. Let me see. And no chance of any kind of sneaky defuse either. He doesn't have a kit, so he will be going down. Let me see. Let me see, guys. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm hot in pursuit. All right. I think that's what happened. There we go. Alive. I'm back. Oh, God, man. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that, everyone. But uh, the mumble server just decided to die on me. So now Dang we're the internet. Yeah, I don't know what it is. We have, we've been having some issues with these mumble servers. But um, the first round in favor of Hellraise is obviously a great start for them. And I'm a little bit sad that uh, the Pasha rushed out so aggressively. And now on the flank here is going to be Neo with a... P2K, and he's going to go down to Kutra as well, so this is looking great. Maybe Hellraisers can actually avoid losing this anti-eco, which has been a pretty popular theme amongst all teams lately. Yeah, it's been pretty brutal for the, the teams to actually be able to do this. It looks like they want to try and apply the pressure here, and Taz, point blank, find Angel, so the good first kill. If he can pick up a gun, that would be great as well. Tries to rush his way onto the site, but he's not going to get another, and it's now Snacks and Viali alone, trying to find a way in. 
And that way, I think just got shut down there. Fialli all alone, and obviously there's no no way he can actually win this round. And the best he can hope for at this point is getting entry, not exit frags, and pick up a gun potentially. It'd be kind of nice, but they're all going to hide in the corner, and he's not really close enough to be able to rush up there and do some damage, which is actually a really cool idea. We've seen that from a couple of players in the past where they hide up in apartments, and when the T's are hiding in this corner, if you just land a couple of shots, you can get a bunch of people killed with the bomb, but Bailey doesn't want to commit to it. It does have armor to save, so I guess maybe with a bit of luck, he can find a better position for his 5-7 here in the third round. Yeah, even... Uh, it's kind of something that's, that people have forgotten about, seeing how dominant the CZ has been. Uh, after you know, ever since its arrival, five seven is still a pretty legitimate pistol. It still does a crazy amount of damage. It was like ninety six percent armor pen, I think. Yeah, so I, you, I think it's actually a lot of borderline. Yeah, I think it, before the ZZ, I would have said that the five seven was borderline OP as well. <laughs> and now it's just like average compared to the CZ. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's where we are oh. now, guys. I love it. Well, it's not even completely untrue, but you're right. People do forget about the 5.7 and there's no reason to. We sold on Nuke Goose as well. I think Snags picked up some really cool headshots in one round. They didn't actually win it, but it was still... There was some action going on there. This time they lose Pasha early on, and it, from the looks of it, this could be 3-0 for Hellraisers early on, which is good, but it's not... Um, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done from both teams. Too soon well, to call it. Oh, you're going to love kind of that. Yeah. Oh, really? He didn't die from that? I thought, yeah, okay, never mind. Oh, well, it is Viali, the one guy with armor. Yeah, that probably was the difference here. They go and find him anyway. It's actually kind of cool because when you throw those grenades, you're probably going to be thinking if anyone was there, he'd definitely be dead. So some pretty good work coming up from Hellraisers, making sure they don't leave anything to chance. And if you're playing Virtus Pro, you really can't afford to do that anyway. You do want to make sure that you've you've checked everything and that there are no, no, no ways you can really fail it. But they, it looks like they're going to come out of this round with everyone alive, actually. And that would be that would be pretty big. They have a good economy. And Virtus Pro only have one kill, and that's on Taz right now. Yeah, this is, um, I mean, this is about as good as it gets as a start here for Hellraisers. And again, it looks like they're going to go ahead for the dogpile in uh, Pit and just keep everybody alive as best they can. Taz needs to be able to find a way in here and do a little bit da a bit of damage if he can. All five of them staying in Pit. I don't know if that's uh, going to be good enough Kuchu's for Kuchu. Kuchu's going to die. Yeah, Kuchu's about to go boom. <laughs> yep. I, d I don't know. Okay. I guess like, I just really badly did not want to give the money to Taz. Well, I guess it kind of worked out as well because Angel only had a Mac 10 that round, so he would have had to upgrade either way. And Kutcher dying just kind of gave Angel his AK. And, you know, worst comes to, or I guess you deny Taz getting the opportunity to get 300 bucks and an AK. He was hoping that the point. blast would be absorbed by his teammates in front of him, but it doesn't work like <laughs> that, that unfortunately. doesn't work that way, yeah. Um, so we're going straight into the fourth round, and there is no AWP picked up yet on either side, which is not a big surprise. Wouldn't be, I mean, I, I think at some point we're probably going to see Pasha pick up one if they get the money for it. But that's the key issue right now. They do need to pick up the money for it. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if it's our coach who picking up an op here as well. He's going to oh, be really look, good at They're going to be charging in here. Adrian opens up with a great double kill, and then Pasha with a quick return. Takes down Angel and Doja, and actually drops the bomb as well. So now they're going to have to run in for the smoke here. They do pick it up, and they're going to be able to put it down. Really nice movement from Hellraisers. I think if that bomb stayed there for much longer, it would be an even bigger issue. Adrian on the corner. Already got the double, looking for the triple, and he's going to pick it up. Such nice play from Adrian right now, leaving Taz and Snags alone. And they got to get in here and get the bomb quickly. Otherwise, they're going to have to eco straight away. These flashes from Hellraisers have been brutal so far. They're really buying a lot of time. And it doesn't even look like Virtus Pro are interested in really making a real attempt at retaking this site. Three guys alive on the A site is a very tough retake indeed with the Triangle of Doom set up and everything. But VP not even willing to risk the guns that they have, the guns and the gear. So you really have to give it to Hellraisers there. How they dealt with that with that situation after Pasha dropped the bomb carrier at quad, it was like the perfect flash that allowed one of the guys from Hellraisers to get over there and pick up that bomb despite the smoke going down from Pasha. Pasha was just completely white. If Pasha dodges that flash, we're looking at a totally different situation for Hellraisers. He saves the round single-handedly for VP. Yeah, and, and what's crazy is that... Um and I think if Virtus Pro had got into a slightly better position, if they had, they were sort of walking back towards the truck, and they actually got caught on the way walking back. Or what do you think, Ben? I think if they had got into the pit, that would have been much different. Much different, oh, very uh, different. Uh, absolutely, it would have made a huge difference. If any, like if not, just the fact that they get into a better position, it's so much easier to survive and give yourself time to to make rotations and whatnot. So that would have obviously played a big part. 
A nice opening from Neo this time. They have a three-way crossfire in the middle with two guys towards uh, Quad, but one of them boosted up on that canopy and then a guy towards Archway. So that's a solid defense from uh, from Virtus Pro and making it 4-1 round right now would pretty put them right back in the game. So that's what they need to do. Kucha goes down, Adrian turns around and Pasha peeks out. So a lot of one-two punches being thrown here from Virtus Pro and it's working out great. Neo does go down, but is it enough to open up the bomb site? It really shouldn't be. Bialy and Snags will finish it off. So four members survive and Virtus Pro bounce right back. Yeah, do a fantastic job of it as well. That was very solid on all fronts there. Perfect peaks from Pasha. Good coordination on the short hold with the man boosted up on canopy like that. Just really nicely done from VP. Wherever Hellraisers went, they were staring down, you know, two barrels or they were getting shot in the back. So, just solid reap there. The problem here is that Hellraisers still have quite a bit in the bank. Even after this round, they'll still have enough to buy in the next. So, VP are not out of the woods yet by any means. No, they're definitely not. Hellraiser just picked up two mollies as well, and you can see they've got some people working towards banana. I'm actually curious to see if they're going to use this to maybe molly the noob corner in arch, like you so oftentimes point out, Anders, or if they're going to go for that classic B push with the Molotovs. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's actually something that Cloud9 and some of the American, like iBuy Power, have done a lot more. Um, are, you know, Molotoving that noob corner, and I think Hellraiser is a team that prefers to do use them at the B-bomb site, but they could have switched it up, and I'm kind of hoping they have, because I think it's a, it's still think it's a really cool idea. No, agreed. I mean, it just clears out that part. I mean, we saw Titan using it quite a bit in the European scene as well for a while there, but yeah. not since then, really. It hasn't really stood out. Now, the thing is, is that there's only 35 seconds left on this clock, and Hellraisers have yet to get onto a site or get a kill. One thing that they have done is they've done a terrific job of getting rid of nades on VP side, but then, hell, Pasha makes it count, gets two kills at quad. Yeah, the most perfectly timed Molotov we've seen for a while. He gets the first kill and the last guy dies to the Molotov. That was just expert timing here. But Neo goes down and they lose the bomb site anyway with 16 seconds left. That's incredible work from Hellraisers. And now Virtus Pro have got to be suffering. If they lose this round, they might actually be able to force it up anyway, except for Bialy. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do it. And that makes you question if they should go for it or if they should save and actually kind of secure a buy in the next round. It's a really tough choice to make. And I think right now they're hoping for a quick entry kill so they can make it a two-on-two -two and get back in. And there it is. And there's another one leaving Angel alone. He's going to go down and the retake happens. They have enough time to defuse. Nicely done from Virtus Pro and also maybe a bit of a mistake from Hellraisers. They had good positions. Why couldn't they win that, Mendetta? Because they peaked, and they peaked, uh, well, they went on kind of solo duels right there. Snacks being able to pick up the first frag in, uh, by the guy who's by car, it's perfectly fine as long as you have one more guy who's able to punish Snacks for committing so much time of, to take out that guy. That would be perfectly fine, but Hellraisers didn't do that, and it was just a sequence of them one by one going out and trying to get the kill. And that's got to be a little bit devastating because they must have realized as well how close they were to having not just a good start to the half, but a really great start where they can start to, to pressure Virtus Pro a lot more than they can right now. Good damage already done to Neo in this round, but um, they, they just gave Virtus Pro a bit of an opening back in the game, and you can't, you can't do that too often. No. The one guy I want to talk about, though, is Doja and his ability to just get ridiculous frags that open up sites because him and Adrian there just completely overwhelmed that, that A site so quickly. And those are with the shot on pit through smoke was just ridiculous. So Hellraiser's made a very good attempt of it, but VP with a, a quick cleanup. Now Pasha gets caught completely exposed. That's oh, nuts. Right? Molotov in the corner is going to force Snacks out, and he still picks up a kills and, and run. That was that was so close, but that was a, a you know that was how we wanted the Molotov to be used. The noob corner, but then the uh, running AK headshot. What's up? Snacks returns it, and then. Oh, Angel will find Snacks in the end. Does a little bit of fire damage. Taz pushing down Banana gets a shot on Doja, though, and that's a great kill. Getting rid of a heavy hitter here for Hellraisers. Now, I think they're going to actually go to the B-bomb side, which right now is the perfect choice coming out here from Hellraisers. Are they going to wrap back around? No, they go back towards A, and that's where by Ali and Neo are holding inside the pit. This is a really strong position, even Neo low on health. This can work out really well. A lot of smoke's coming down here. Neo going to go down to Markolov, and now by Ali in the pit alone. Ten seconds, nine seconds. They're going to get this bomb down quick. Otherwise, they're going to be in some trouble, and the bomb will be planted here. By Ali can't do anything to stop it. So another two on three. And this time, Virtus Pro are going to have maybe an even harder time getting something done here. By Ali does a lot of damage. We'll pick up the one kill, but he's going to get double teamed, leading Taz in a one on two. Trying to come through the smoke. He's already made the noise. They're pretty sure they know where he is. He's got the kit. 
And just the M4, and he's going to get dropped by Kucha. So this time, Hellraisers, they leave nothing to chance. They make it work and actually make sure that they get into a 2-on-1 instead of that 2-on-3. And it's going to be... It's going to be 2-5, and Virtus Pro without the money to buy. Wow. Yeah. Hellraisers did enough damage in the previous round to actually force the Seiko on, on BP. So even though they lost it, and they would have been in an even better position, obviously, if they'd won the, the previous round, they still do enough for it to, to be able to punish uh, BP. Yeah, so this is the most yeah. important thing. Yeah, and with the way uh, Hellraisers have been playing their anti-eco so far, which is, well, kind of similar to how they play their buy rounds, it's just slow and methodical. They should be able to pick this up without too many losses. Yeah, and this is Hellraisers not really losing many anti-ecos, right? The team that we really were looking at as a, as a team that was struggling with these kinds of rounds. It seems like Hellraisers, they're really managing to keep their control versus VP. Only losing uh, Angel to a CZ up in apartments on Neo, but still, Hellraisers have not lost control of the situation. They're still able to dictate exactly what's going to happen here. They are maintaining, guys. I think you just hit the uh, you hit a really important point right here. That's something that a lot of teams have been struggling with, and Hellraisers was one of the teams that we were calling out a lot for doing it. I think iPad Power is another team that maybe comes to mind, but yeah. those two are, from, are far from the only ones. I think Dignitas have had some pretty crucial losses, especially during the the Cologne tournament, where uh, where they ended up losing some important CZ rounds like that. Snags does pick up a kill and steals an AK, and I think uh, oh, he's actually what is he doing? Is he stealing more AKs? He wants to run away. He's basically hoarding AKs at this point, obviously for Taz, but that's that's smart play. I'm loving this. He wanted to dual wield. <laughs> yeah. That would actually be pretty sick if you could dual wield AKs. Vendetta, don't, don't put any ideas in the <laughs> okay. devs' minds. I'll, I'll be quiet. No, we're just joking. We do love to poke at the Valve devs, but when it comes down to it, they're actually pretty cool guys, and we luckily got a chance to talk to them about all of our frustrations during Gamescom, and they are... They're surprisingly nice, I feel like, when you when you keep criticizing them. They're still... They keep a great face, I the, think. Yeah, so. they take it with a smile. They for do. For sure. <laughs> you know what the best part is? It's like, no, no, keep talking about the CZ, because this is practice. I'm just getting better at making this argument now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's how we started one of the... <laughs> like, this, yeah. That's how I was introduced to one of the Valve devs, actually, because Sem had already had that talk with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't give up easily, but we're going to keep trying. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's always good to have an argument, right? Neo towards the boiler room, going to peek up here. He's got to be careful. They're coming from every angle. He's already falling a little. No, actually, he's doing a lot of damage right now. He's not taking any in return. I thought he had. Now they're spraying for the smoke here. Grenade to follow, and eventually... Neo outstays his welcome and is going to go down. Bialy goes down as well in spite of what Prody should have been a kill. So this is a huge opening. And now Hellraisers are going to put the pressure on Semler. Hellraisers are looking dominant at this point. Pasha with a great shot on Angel, who's peeking in pit. Kucha with a good time. He manages to come right back in, into it. We're into a two on three now. And Snacks, he's get, he's going to walk into Adrian, pick up one. But there's a man sneaking up behind at mid. And is he going to find him? Oja will come out ahead. So now into a two on one with Taz working his way in through Arch. But the defense is already set up on this uh, bomb site, And Hellraisers have burned a lot of time off this clock. There isn't a whole lot of time left for Taz to act. Especially with Smokes and Molotovs going down. I think you just have to give up. It's such a decisive, you know, it's you know, it's definitely showing that you're not invited to the party when, when the guests or when the host actually throw Molotovs at the door, then you kind of know, all right, I'm just going to go somewhere else. Because you can tell he was sort of thinking about it up until that point. You know, maybe, maybe I can just sneak in, grab a few drinks, maybe some chips on the table, and then, you know, it's going to be all right. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I think the big part that round uh, how racist was obviously you know, Neo overstaying his welcome, but I do like the fact that VPR are recognizing the fact that Hellraisers, even though they're playing slow and executing on sites very slowly, or very late into the round is a better way to phrase it, they still take control over apps early on in the round, and that's something BP wants to deny. So I like the ID behind what Virtus Pro are doing in their CT setups, but I don't like the fact that Neo stayed around for what felt like 20 years too long. Yeah, he got the damage done early on, and I guess he just he wanted to give his team that opening kill. And in, in return, actually, what happened is they they lost him, and that was uh, that was not good. That was that was sort of the start of the landslide right there. This time they're they're back to C set. They bought a lot of smokes for it being an eco run, but I don't really mind it because they are going to be able to buy an extra round anyway. And right now they need to they need to play the the long shot here. They need to to basically hope that they can get an eco round in with one AK here and make it work because this but is out of control. Yeah, but I also think this is partly due to the fact that they know how Hellraisers play. They play slow and methodical, so 
if they wait, if Hellraisers do what Hellraisers normally do, which is wait until there's like 30 seconds left before they do anything, if you have three smokes left on a bomb site to smoke stuff off, Hellraisers are going to have to run through smokes. Flashbang comes out here and Neo can't connect with it and he's going to go down. Angel getting a, a kill more than he really should have. Snacks is going to instantly return on to him, so that's at least something, but he's also defending the bomb site alone. And Taz is going to go down, trying to come in from the B bomb site. Adrian was waiting the whole round for him out here. That's some some patience shown from the Kazakhstanian player. Now we're at an 8-2 to two scoreline and Virtus Pro can buy once again. I feel like this game is it's just really slipping from Virtus Pro now. I'm surprised by this. Yeah, this is definitely getting a little bit out of control for them. And they're, I mean, they've lost their momentum. They're constantly having to fight back versus Hellraisers, and they're constantly having to fight versus their own money because they, they never really have the money. Like, this is a this is one of the only rounds that we've had in this half where they're really just, like, full bot, full nades, kits, everything, the whole shebang. VP have got it. So if ever there was a time for them to start turning it around, now is it. It feels like it. Pasha is going to go down, so that's not the start of a turnaround. And around the corner, Neo's going to charge into everyone. And all he does is trade quick. Down in the pit by Ali's holding strong and over towards Archway. It's snags. So right now, Hellraiser are actually boxed in a little bit. They're trying to shoot their way up. They dropped the bomb here, but now it's still a 2 on 2 Snags with a grenade out. He's going to get taken down. Careless play coming out from the uh, CT side. And while well, Bialy's in the pit, that's great. And he's covering the bomb, but they're going to grenade their way out. And if they get the bomb, they can just run for B. And that's what they're going to do. Yeah, exactly. They're just going to do exactly that. Bialy, though, is he going to waste any time? Is he going to fully commit to just hunting them down on this B site? It seems like it. He's he's definitely no. Well, that nade kind of gives it away as well. So if ever there was like a clear picture painted there, that was it. Hellraiser's chucking the nade being like, yes, Bialy, we are going to the B site. But hey, we're going to leave Angel behind to take some shots at you and make your life difficult. And I was just about to say, Bialy, he could have gone for it when he was at around 80 points of health. But... um. As soon as he took all that damage, there's really almost no point any longer. He's going to fall back and save us. As, as painful as that is, because you don't want to be saving when you're six and about to be seven rounds behind on the CT side of Inferno. But at the same time, again, if well, this if this M4 is in the right place in the next round, it could make a difference. Are we seeing now VP fall into that deadly spiral where you just start ecoing too much? You start saving too much, you know, your guns, you don't risk it, you don't want to take that risk and go for that big play, and you're just going to play safe and go and save that gun, but then you start running out of rounds to actually save with, and now they're down 2-9 to nine on their CT side of Inferno. So it's like, great, they're saving the guns, they're able to get a buy together again, but it's not a super good buy. You have two guys who don't have nades, and now, you know, again, Hellraisers are going to have an easier time with things. Absolute madness here. I'm I'm shocked. I really am shocked. And, you know, one of the things we started off talking about was an AWP, and speaking of which, Kucha is going to pick up Neo, but while my prediction was it was going to be Pasha picking it up, but there was sort of a constraint on that, which is the money. They just haven't had the money to do some of the stuff that we sometimes see Virtus Pro do on the CT side here, so that's maybe one of the reasons why they're also struggling right now. Doge is going to pick off Taz over towards Banana. They do get a return frag from Pasha, but still not looking good right now. No, does it win this one? No, he does not. Snacks will find him. Brings it back to a three on three. They're trying to hunt him down, Hellraisers, chasing him up B with that scoped AWP. But Kucha will not find the opportunity to find the shot. And now Hellraisers once again have to slow down their pace. I do like where VP are set up, however. One guy on each site with one that is Pasha floating around in CT Speedway. He could go either way very quickly. It comes down to whether Hellraisers are going to give away their intent early on here and give him enough time to react and get to a site to help defend. You gotta be joking as well. That was that was snags over by the uh by the sandbags, and he had the angle for it. He just couldn't pick up the kill Pasha trying to spray through, and it's not working at all. Two on three with the bomb down, a lot of grenade on Hellraiser's side, including two Molotovs. It's going to be so hard to retake this bomb site from Pasha and Bali. In fact, it'd be almost a miracle if they can make it work, but they have to go for it. I mean, now is the time, Sam, as you said. No more eco. Now they've either got to go big or go home, and that Molotov is actually going to force Adrian out, so that's a big kill to start off with. Now it's a two on two, two on one, leaving Bali alone, and that clock is already ticking. They've got to come up big here, but Markolov does some damage. Now it's a one on one. Kucha just has to wait, even with the, mo even the smoke here. He's not in the bad spot. Fake is going in once, but it doesn't matter. Kucha will pick up the kill, and even if he hadn't, there would have been no time left for Bialy. 9-2. A good attempt, but it's not enough. Yeah. Kucha actually lives there. I thought that he was about to go up to the bomb with him so low on HP. 
Yeah, Kutcher mm-hmm. did a really good job that round. Well, first off, he got the entry frag onto Neo, which is obviously huge if you're on the T side. And the fact that he spotted up Bialy, because Bialy's initial plan was to do the rotation through Banana. And Kutcher was placed all the way down in, in T pit, just waiting for someone to make that rotation. And as soon as he caught out by Ali in that position, Bialy had to kind of readjust and go back to respawn as well. And that does, well, that makes the defense for Hellraisers and the Afterplant so much easier because they know where both of the Hellra- uh, DP members are coming from. Good opening kill from Pasha, who's actually picked up a glass cannon AWP. I think this is sort of a sign either of, you know, playing again the, the long shot here, or maybe a sign of desperation from the Polish side. They realize now that the only chance they have of basically getting back into this game is making it 10-5 on the first half, winning the pistol round, and then probably making it to 8-10, and then still, even then, they have a long, a long distance to go, but it's at least possible at that point. But if they lose any more rounds on this first half, I don't think the pistol round's even going to make a difference. It's going to be brutal. There's no doubt. It's just a long road right now for VP, one round at a time. And that's all they can be telling themselves in their heads. They're just going one round at a time. We play our game. We focus on our game. And things like this with Pasha is part of their game. Look at Neo right now, pushing way down second mid. He's going to get up into underpass right now in a moment. And this is going to close Hellraisers into that banana area. So now it's, they're closing in on this. They're caught in a box and Hellraisers, they have to go forward. They can no longer back up. Yeah, they do back up and run right into Neo, who sprays down one and almost could have got Markolov as well. But uh, even with Markolov surviving, actually he's maybe... No, he's going to wait. I was going to say there's no time, but if there had been just a few more seconds, he could have run to the for the bomb plant here. He's going to pick up a kill and then fall back to safety, it seems. Now he needs to not die, and he will not. So nicely played there by Markolov, and he still had 6k. Even without getting any bonus money, he still has 6k in the bank. So he's not. He, it's not a problem for him holding onto a gun. Or living through the end of the round. Well, VP, once again, they managed to get the round on their, on their side. Now they have to get the remaining two. All of the pressure is on the poles right now. They have to step up big. They do indeed. We're nearing the end of this first half here, and I'm not sure what it is. That's, I mean, at least Virtus Pro got that round. If they can win the next two... Maybe there's a chance still, but I'm finding it really hard being uh, being too positive right now for the Polish team. It's hard to find a silver lining really at this point. I think they've given up too many rounds on their CT side really for this to to work all the way in. Not counting them out, man. VP are still brutal on the C side. So that's it's something we have to keep in mind is that Hellraisers, if they're hitting the shots, should be able to deal with it, but still VP can be just as harsh on their T side as Hellraisers are being right now. So, we'll see. I mean, it comes down to them actually being able to recover in this round right here. Before we start even talking about the future, VP are already down a man. Taz getting picked off by Doja to start at the top of Banana does not help VP's odds at all. And Hellraisers, you know, rather than just rush and speed up, they've got 30 seconds and they're still spread out. Nobody's even carrying the bomb right now for them. This is some real madness. They're going to go for it with just 25 seconds, and only now they're picking up the bomb with 20 seconds. Is this a mistake right now? They're going back to the A bomb site here, and it's just by Ali holding 18 seconds, and he's going to pick up one more kill. He has to stay alive and stand strong right here. He's out of bullets in his M4 now, picks up the C set, 75, 10 seconds left, and oh my god, by Ali comes up with a stunning triple kill. Survives on four points of health, and that's so sick. That saves the round for Virtus Pro. If he had gone down, I think that would have been it. It would have probably been 11 to 3 instead. Yes, it would it would cert most certainly have been because Hellraiser would have been able to get a safe plant and then the guys rotating him over from B side for VP would have just been stuck completely on the open. So Hellraiser's Hellraiser's just running into the blender. Bialy, that's the kind of single that's the kind of star play that they need to, to have right now, guy a guy who can step up and get three frags in a round, which is something we haven't really seen from them at all so far in this first half. Hence the score line. So Bialy waking up a little bit late. Now Pasha is going to get an opportunity to take some shots. He's going to get one. Gets baited out for the second, but that sets it up for Neo to get the double kill. Yeah, not at all bad here from, from Rudders Pro. And, and just something basic like Return Frags is, is at least a setup they have now, whereas previously, whenever they lost someone, it seemed like that was it. There was no chance of a Return Frag. So it's nice to see them adjusting. The big problem here is if Doge actually picks up the kill on Snags, he could go for the plan in B straight away, and it'd be a strange one on two. He's going to walk around the corner, but Snags won't allow for it. And that will be the end of the round here.
The chicken comes in and grieves for Doja. It's going to be 10-5 for the first half. Still a great job by Hellraisers. But I think Vodish Pro have bought themselves uh, a ticket back into the to the game here. It may be, you know, in terms of lottery, it may be like one in a thousand here, but it can happen. It can't happen, but I think it rests on them getting the pistol around. I think that's a must at this point. Because if Hellraisers get off to a good start once again, I don't see any way Virtus Pro can stop them. One of the big issues Virtus Pro had on their CT side right now was the fact, well, as you alluded to, they never got return frags. So they lost their initial guy. Hellraisers get the, the opening frag and they have so much room to work with. And when they're playing so slow paced as they do, it kind of makes it really hard for VP to actually do the right rotations and have the right amount of people on the correct bomb site when stuff goes down. And if Hellraisers simply just doesn't allow Virtus Pro to get entry frags, I think they'll be fine on the CT side. Well, we're waiting for the game to restart and then we should be good to go. I think everyone is ready up, so uh, any second now we'll be, we'll be good with it. If you're just joining the stream, then a big welcome to Room on Fire. This is the Case King of the Hill, cooled by Alpenfoon. Our kings from last week is NIP and they're waiting in the next match, which is going to be between either uh, Virtus Pro or Hellraisers, depending on what, who wins this final map in the best of three. So far, it's a 1-1 map score and we're going straight into the second half here. So welcome to the show. Remember to click the link at the bottom of the page, guys. There's a face Facebook link going on, a Facebook raffle going on there for an AK racing chair, so don't miss it. Follow the uh, the page and you'll be good to go. Here it comes, 16th round. And in we go with Virtus Pro straight up second mid push right now. Three guys from Hellraisers to stop any kind of early B push, and that's not going to be the case. VP slowly working their way to mid, but I love this Hellraisers. They don't decide to back off. No, that would be too simple. That would be too easy. That would be cowardly. They just go ahead and actually look at the flank at the bottom of mid right now. This could be big. Oh, Taz spots them, but he's still going to go down. And now they're weirdly boxed in. And in fact, they're going to try and run for it. But Markolov is here. C set in hand. And he's going to walk out and take down Pasha as well. Stunning play for Markolov. Leaves by Ali and Neo. And they have the bomb down in pit as well. I don't think this can get any worse. Apart from maybe a team kill or someone getting knifed right here. This is, this is looking very bad for Virtus Pro. It's nearly impossible, especially because Hellraisers are making the right rotations right now. As long as they don't give up any frags before Adrian gets to the site, well, which they don't, they should be fine. So yeah, pretty easy round and solidly executed from Hellraisers. The fact that it didn't overcommit as soon as they get the entry frag onto Taz there. Oh man. They were in a, I mean, they had very few seconds to make up their minds. And as soon as they realized that the, the CTs were already at the terrace slope, they decided, all right, let's commit to pushing out of this apartments. And maybe that could have worked out. But the fact that Markov was right there and got the quick double kill, that killed the round instantly for Virtus Pro. And now they're in a very bad spot. They haven't invested into anything this round except for some CZs. I'm wondering if they're going to be going for an early buy the upcoming round because they didn't plant the bomb last round and they haven't really done anything this round either. Team kill comes in. Adrian a little bit too hungry to pick up those kills. He does get a double at least and we're now looking at 12 to 5 and Virtus Pro no C set still no early buy they have to I mean do, do you risk it all right do you risk it all if you if you go for an early buy and lose it right here Hellraisers are on 14 rounds at least and you have no chance I guess VP they feel like okay we give them 13 rounds and then we just shut them down from there once we get the first buy and Pasha gets an AWP everybody gets nades AKs and you just go for it because at this point, that's all they can do. They're just speeding up for this B site very, very quickly here, however, looking to overwhelm the defense fast, and there you go, Neo hunts down Angel. Some real determination from Neo there, but he runs into a C set 75, and that's not... Uh, he didn't just have enough to deal with at that time. So a double kill comes in from Adrian, but I still love the play from, uh, from Neo. That was really aggressive uh, coming out from him, and they get the bomb down at the very least. Now we have, well, the man advantage situation for Hellraisers. They are managing to hold off the push for a while, but Markloff will find one kill. Kutra walks in, takes out Bialy, and Adrian just calmly catches Pasha peeking towards construction. That is going to be the end of this round. Hellraisers will be sitting on 13, but Virtus Pro still managed to get a maximum amount of money. Not through kills, but through getting the plant and not really embedding that last round too much. Oh, man. 19th round coming up in Virtus Pro have plenty of money to buy I'm looking at Neo West and purchased anything but it's going to be another AK I was wondering if they were going to go for an AWP on, on Pasha maybe try and see if they can get an early entry frag on someone but at this point guys we're at three rounds three more rounds for Hellraisers and they get to challenge NIP in the finals 
Exactly right. That's a great opportunity for them. Three rounds. The question is, can they close it? You know, that mental state that you need to find. But it seems like the A team is showing up tonight. So I'd be amazed if they couldn't take it right now. VP are the ones who are on the back foot. And VPs are the ones who have all the pressure on their shoulders to get something done in this round. And there you have it. Kucher already starting off strong. Pasha tries to rush up, but at least Hellraisers, they are setting up with two guys in apartments, allows for the refrag, and allows for them to hold on to the advantage that they got early on. Yeah, and that makes such a big difference. Dosha could have actually got picked off then. That was a dangerous jump, and he managed to flash himself as well. But you're right, it's a four on three, and it's now or never for the Polish team. Can they pick up an entry frag? Make it three on three, get into a bomb site, put the bomb down. There's a lot to, uh, to there's a lot of distance to cover here still before they're actually in a position to win a round. And if they lose, well, then it's all downhill. No, Taz isn't going to find... Taz is out hunting right now at Top Banana, looking to see if he can find anybody at all to pick off. There was only one guy there, Adrian, holding for Hellraisers, but Adrian has wisely backed off to the site, thrown down a smoke, and now with 20 seconds left, VP actually have to go rushing through here and just try and catch Hellraisers off guard. Great play from, a a from Angel, sorry, right at the corner of that smoke. Adrian's going to peek out a notch, almost picks up a kill, but then Angel comes through and picks up three in a row. Absolutely great play, and that'll be the end of it, 14 to 5. That initial kill was really good, and I actually think Adrian could have probably picked up a couple of kills on his own there, but I think he hesitated uh, putting the last bullet into that first VP player. We're now at 14 5, and I mean, do you have any answers for us, Vendetta? What is it that VP can do at this point? Uh, it's tough to say. Right now, Hellraisers are doing exactly what we needed to see from them. Basically, they're not allowing VP to get entry frags, and whenever VP gets a frag, they have a return. Oh, good grenades coming in here. Actually, Adrian very low, and Angel is going to go down. So now they have a great opening towards the B bomb site, but the rotation is here so quickly with Kucher, and actually, it's a good job from VP slowing down. If they'd kept pushing, I think they would have lost that round. Uh, pacing themselves that's another thing you know knowing when to slow it down not to overcommit not to yolo through smoke basically uh, so Virtus pro they've spread back around across the map markov is the only one holding on this a site right now three guys rotated over for hellraisers i'm wondering if this isn't a bit too much actually for hellraisers to have on the b site right now considering considering vp haven't made any noise here yet i don't like the fact that markov actually decided to move away from the pit area. That's probably the safest place where he could be. And now he's inside the bomb site. I think they already spotted him, so this is really good for Virtus Pro. There's a chance they can still win this round. And uh, even though there's 30 seconds left, they will pick up the kill. And now it's a weird three on four here. And Hellraisers are so far out of position. I'm not sure this is going to work out, especially not when Neo picks up a headshot like that long range. And Adrian, is he disconnected over here? So maybe that's sure. why they were out of position, actually. It seemed like he was... No, he's there. No, no, he's, he's just there. talking to each other. Because right, they, yeah, are, yeah. they are sitting next to each other, so... You know, as soon as that went down, they probably you know, asked each other what went wrong that round, what really went down on A-site for Markov to get caught out of position. Because VP were on site and basically had... We're ready to plant the bomb when Markov dies. So that leaves Hellraisers with no opportunity to actually rotate in time, and that's why they're so slow. So they're probably asking Markov, why <laughs> why did you get into a position where you wouldn't be able to provide any information ahead of time? Oh man, it's 14 to uh, to 6 right here. I mean, I, I really don't know what to say. I, I wish I had some encouraging, uh, some encouraging words right now for them, but I, I really don't. Do you guys well, have anything to say? They got the entry frag this round and they won the round. So yeah. now they know the magic recipe. Now it's a matter of finding it. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So if Hellraiser just denies BP the opportunity, then yeah, but oh. that doesn't seem to happen. Adrian, such cheeky play. The first kill, all right, that was good, but he actually walked through and just decisively took the shot through the smoke. Pash is going to go down, falls off the balcony, and pa Taz is now in a one-on-five. And there's even an orc picked up here on uh, on Markolov. So everything right now seems to be working for uh, for Virtus Pro. This is. This is just a, an overpower. Sorry, not for Otis, for Hellraisers. This is an overpowering performance right now for the CT side. And that take of Banana was just... Uh, that sealed the deal for them, I think. Taz is going to go down. There's just enough money to buy on four people on, uh, on Virtus Pro's side. But this feels like it's over. It's match and map point for Hellraisers. What a surprise. Yeah, Hellraisers definitely showed up today. And yeah. uh, I actually think this is one of the cases where... 
Well, we haven't seen a lot of Hellraiser's CT side, but I guess, you know, from what we've seen on Inferno, they did the right thing. It's kind of like they're the Epsilon now and VPR Hellraiser's. Because, Pretty much, right? Yeah, Hellraiser's are not doing a lot of mistakes, and they're basically not allowing VP to have any any opportunities to, to make a play. Almost an entry frag, but it gets returned by Kucher instead. That should have been Doja going down and Virtus Pro with a big advantage here. Now they're going to become rushing out of apartments. Pasha will pick up a kill, but instantly returned. I'm not sure this is enough. It's a four on three and everything rides on this. Kucher? Well, actually, it's going to be uh, Adrian to pick up that kill on Neo and Archway. And out Snags and Taz holding on for dear life right now, but I'm not sure it's enough. Taz will pick up the one kill and Markolov goes down. So actually, somehow we're into a two on two. And the bomb is going to go down with just a few seconds left, so that's good. Right before Adrian shows up and Angel 2, they're rushing onto the site. So right now, Virtus Pro, they've had almost no time to get into good positions. And you can shoot through this box now. Snags is going to walk out and pick up the kill. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one and Snags will win it with a great double kill. So close. And they manage to stay alive a little bit longer. Virtus Pro have to win eight rounds in a row, guys, before they can get back in and force overtime. It can happen, but God, it's a long distance oh, yeah. away right now. It is a long way away. There's no time. Not only does he get both kills with the AUG, but he holds on to the AUG. And he even drops an AK for a teammate and decides to hold on to the AUG even more. So Snacks is a total badass. But he just made it happen for a team there, getting those two frags and he's up. Double A down banana. He does a lot of damage to Taz and Neo both. Wow. That's terrifying. That that double grenade could have almost killed both of them if they had been a little bit more clumped up. And um the fact that it doesn't work out that way still doesn't prevent Kucha from picking off Neo at the end, and Taz is almost dead. So even though we're partly so just briefly celebrating Virtus Pro doing a good job, you have to ask the question if it's going to be enough here. No, we, there's no way of knowing until the very end, obviously, right now. This is, I mean, this is basically Hellraiser's game to lose. Round after round, it's going to be Hellraiser's round to lose. VP are the ones who are looking for all the mistakes that Hellraiser's are going to be making here. And Hellraiser's are just playing super passively. They don't need to play aggressively at any point on this map. Double nade down banana, there you go. Kucher taking a peek down mid, great. But then they just fall back to the sites and they make sure that VP, a man down, and Taz taking so, having taken so much damage, have to work their way up to a site somehow. And that's definitely a harder job for VP. And even harder now as Kucha picks up a second kill. They're going to try and go for the B-bomb side, but I think this is going to end in tears. Angel on the corner sprays down one. Very nearly a double kill. He's going to get taken down from by Ali, but that doesn't make it any easier for Virtus Pro. They're in a 2 on 4, and Adrian is still the back of sight here. 15 seconds left. It's almost no chance they can do this. Great flashbang comes in, but they still haven't found Adrian. And he's going to finish it off with a kill, making it 16-7. to 7. And it will be Hellraisers to take the, uh, the, the best of three away here from...